ông cái chục ông cái nội dung đại bác cả cái trong đại ca này thì sẽ là ca tạm cao về phía địa bàn cùng tục sắp là ca nơi ngày nay ông chấm đẹp cầm nọt sự đập sự khay cam đang mà đang gặp ở vị đại miền hà thuận niêm thì ccp mà rồi phải sắp tầm bay lục đối với riêng lang rica bây giờ thành lập hiệp vận miền vận miền Kia kia nó bốc cô đây ông chụp đây có hàng chưa nhà chỗ rùm được không cần chụp nào cả xăm nào cả tao đặt ngày đi xôm cổ rộp lô bà thiên cổ rộp phía kia tiền ơ nơi rương cái đây ní miên vọt thầm miên lược lên ta chôn chọp chọt yên xa rí miên vọt thầm miên nơi bần tốp khung khuôn nơi kháng khao bần tốp xăm nào cả đòi mùi hát sốc hợp hiệp đang bận đang rót bạc về ní đại trừ một đo sắc hay cắm nơi không sạm và nạc cao thay ní cứ đang bận đang rót bạc về ní đại miền hà sơn niêm tccp một rồi bảy trăm bảy mươi đang bận đang rót bạc về ní rụp ní miền vật miền nơi bận tụp rong chấm rong chấm cả có hai pi ong chấm đông chấm rẻ ri ai đang bận đang rót bạc về ní bầm rong sầm rắp sạm và nạc cao thay ní cứ đã bọn đang rất bảo vệ ní đại miên ra hạ sở niếm TCCP mở rối bảm bầy xong ổ quân lục thiên Bà ổ quân Nếu ngày này ta sẽ đầy tầm rạch cho bỏ ông trong lúc ra tầm bông Chúc ngày tì mà khi bảo mùi khai bây giờ cả chân nằm bì bọn đọc bí Bạn tâm rạch thà Ông chẳng rẻ ai Bằng cọp ở dụng chập chào Chỗ rùm được Yên dưới rì chỗ rùm được nông cây chẳng nào cả này Tại vì thí Vì bản tục khung khuôn khăn cao Mà xa xa mà cả này Anh đã lòng tạm bì thiên Bài tâm mùi bàm này bì thiên tây khăn nông Được bì đề ông chẳng rẻ Dù khởi thà Cả bằng cọp bẹp này Cứ chìa phá lập dạo này dụng thó Lực lên tại trừ rửa dầu cá bằng hai vật tẩm miên đại to là khung vật tục sạm nạc cá hay là khung ông long pil cá biển sâm mình nhé cứ cầm bây giờ bị cá biển cái đấy ta mà dẹp bây giờ bị cá biển cái đấy lục yên tử ban đã bị đỏ hốt nơi lịch khắt lẽ bằng sắt bỏ quạt khung cá miên vật tẩm miên nơi khung bản tục sạm là cá hay còn miền bầm non ở chỗ rùm này to nơi khung cây chấm là cá này tệ vị thí sạm là cá khung bản tục này to chia bị xe này khung long pel sẽ đập tới cây cam xạ xây đang đầm và đang rập vào vị ni lực lên chạy khung cột nắng chừ chừ đầm bầy chỗ rùm cây chấm là cá sạm là cá đại vị gió bị bản tục khung khuôn khăng cầm còn tại nơi bậc mấy nhất cứ môn về làm lá cá sạm lá cá lục về chợ bình đất chỉ con thôn thiệu vi đại chỉ cụ bẹt về chăm cá từ tua bình đất thái toàn sọc cặp hiệp chuẩn chọc chào nơi một tí khủng khang ở vô tổ có bàn bình đất nâng cấp thông qua khơi nơi sọc cặp hiệp rồi bỏ lục yên xử ri mình là ó đôi chỉ viên cá hot Khlang nợ vị thư cho lần ná Bạn tạch bằng tui Chọc trung Tâm răn bằng lụa Hộp bằng bàn hay có ụt Hay Còn bằng đó là nó xa tha Còn bằng ai Sẽ đáp nợ bằng tục xa mạng ca khăn lưu bàn lợi Hay thông mời bà thiên ông nhìm rẽ ảnh nhạc Còn sẽ đáp xa mạng ca nợ bằng tục rung chăm khăn cọng Nghe thư lưu bệ tạm đàn Đời mù là hết nì Ông nhìm rẽ sơm rạch tha đời xa miền bắc nhà hà sơm nào sống bật men bàn tay nơi về đại anh vật thật ní vì mình xây đồng bạc nia tại nông vị thiên nông ca chạm bách đồng bạc thiên nia 
อมปีสกมาลเพียบภายในดูเปลี่ยนกายระบบกินจับเจ้าหรือดำไปจนนี้ในการปฏิบัติโดยรวมในกิจดำเนินการจุนจุนแรกเอาอย่างแรกคือสำหรับท่าบังกอบเอาไปจุนจับเจ้านักเจ้ารวมกิจดำเนินการในเจบิทีนองดำเนินการสำเนาการไงนี่ปีเหมือนกุบคุมครูนขังกระอมตามระยะอุปกรณ์สตูสมชื่นอ thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. First, there was a wrong translation, so let me. At least it came out in English that way. So let me make very clear our position. Yesterday, Mr. Ng Sri filed a withdrawal of his waivers and is insisting is insisting on being present in court and not. Participating indirectly downstairs in the holding cell. So there was a mistranslation. I want to make sure that everybody fully understands the position. Along with the withdrawal of the waivers, a notice was also filed where we indicated what the law is on this issue. Today we did meet with Mr. Ng Sri and we spoke with the doctor and we will be asking that the doctor come and give evidence because we asked the doctor, is Mr. Ng Sri capable of following the proceedings all day long as was indicated to us by Dr. Campbell and he laughed. I was with my case manager. I leave it to you to interpret what the laughter meant. But when we look at this rule, 81.5, it says, where due to health reasons or other serious concerns, the accused cannot attend in person before the chamber, but, but is otherwise physically and mentally fit to participate. And there is the crux of the problem. That's the rub of our argument, is the but, otherwise physically and mentally fit. And we have maintained that he is not fit, mentally uh, fit because he's unable to concentrate. Now, if the trial chamber will insist on him being downstairs, we have a couple of choices. One, we have the monitor on him at all times so everybody, including his lawyers, and the public can see exactly his state of affairs. We do not wish to participate in a proceeding where our client is downstairs, he's fatigued, he's asleep, he's semi-conscious, and yet we're pretending we're pretending that he's actually following the proceedings and he's assisting in his own defense. We, on the part of the defense, do not wish to uh, participate in this sort of an enterprise. The other option is to bring him into court, which is what exactly what Mr. Ng Sri wishes. Now, I can understand the trial chamber not wishing to have the public view Mr. Ng Sri or for there to be a record of his actual uh, uh, state of affairs. So the other option is, is for one member of the defense team to be down there to be videotaping him because one way or the other, one way or the other, no matter what, we will be making a record. That's what we tried to do when we requested, when we, we made a request to the trial chamber that you issue an order at the detention unit so that we can monitor how he is. And instead, you held a secret meeting without the defense, but included the prosecution. And that meeting had to do with something totally different. We were not invited at the meeting where you had a conversation with the prosecution, the assess, the administration about the facilities. We had made a request that he be allowed uh, the, the caretaker be allowed to either uh, tape record what she was able to observe or to have somebody at the detention unit write down what she observed because she's illiterate. And you took that request and then went on to hold a secret meeting. And I use the word secret because the defense was never invited. And so for these reasons, we think 
that before we go on, we hear from the doctor. And I intend to question the doctor. I want to make a record. We want a complete record. We understand the trial chamber's dilemma. Finishing the trial while Mr. Ng Shri is still alive. I understand that. My function is to make sure that he gets a fair trial. And he cannot get a fair trial. He cannot exercise his rights. If he's down there, semi-conscious, in pain, he can't concentrate. He can hardly breathe. And we're pretending that, we're, uh, that he's actually uh, participating in the events. It's a charade. So my request, first and foremost, is to have the doctor come. We will then see what the trial chamber does. We've already discussed the matter with Mr. Ng Shri, And if necessary, we're prepared to walk out of this courtroom because we certainly do not wish to substantially contribute to this affair unless his rights are fully and fairly protected and we make a record at all times as to his actual state of being. Thank you. Mr. President, I'm on my feet. I would like to យើងនឹងទុកឱកាសជួនលោកដោះស្រាយបញ្ហាមុនដំណើរការសួរដេញដោលដើមដឹងរាប់រាប់វិនីដោយបញ្ហាផ្សេងគ្នាយើងបាន
follow the proceedings through audiovisual means as allowed for under Rule 815. Um, that's that's the key issue. Your honours have heard expert evidence uh, on this matter, um, and that's what your decision refers to. There have been three experts in the last three months that have uh, examined Mr Yang Sari, and they have all said that he's mentally fit and physically fit despite being frail to participate in this trial, whether it be in the courtroom or in the holding cell, and their recommendation was that it would be in the holding cell. It's, um, it's normal. Uh, to expect that someone of that age uh, needs extra facilities to assist with, um, assist with his health condition. But one thing is clear is that your decision has been made on the basis that he could fully and meaningfully participate in the trial. What, what unusually what occurs often we hear at the bar table from the defence uh, one state of affairs, and then in their pleadings we hear another state of affairs, and in the evidence we hear another state of affairs. Uh, nothing that counsel has put forward today um, is really consistent with the evidence that you have heard, and your honours uh, must base your, uh, your findings on evidence, not on um, Party submission, party submissions. In fact, when we look at the um, the request for reconsideration, which uh, all the parties received yesterday, um, asking your honours to reconsider the decision. Um, I quote paragraph 32, where the defence for Yang Sari state, there has never been any allegation that Mr Yang Sari is mentally ill. Uh, this is simply not the issue. So they're, they're certainly not claiming that um, he's uh, mentally can't follow the proceedings. And if you look at paragraph 31, contrary to what was put forward today, it was written yesterday, it states, if Mr Yang Sari does not lie perfectly still during the entirety of each trial session, but instead turns his head slightly, shifts his position, or must get up, uh, he will not be able to concentrate. But certainly, this is very consistent what the Yang Sari defence are putting forward with the um, uh, assessment of the doctors. That if Mr Yang Sari does lie still, um, doesn't move around, um, and is put under the, the best and the most optimum, optimum conditions, which would be in the holding cell, he can follow the proceedings for an hour and a half and then have a break and then he can follow the next session. That's what the doctor said, Dr Campbell said. Dr Campbell said he interviewed him for an hour and a half in November and he was able to follow the conversation and he came back in the afternoon and interviewed him again and he was still able to follow the conversation. A conversation. And, and that, in fact, is what Yang Sari has put forward in their own pleading yesterday, that if, if he does lie still, he can follow the proceedings, and certainly in the courtroom wouldn't be the appropriate place at this point in time, certainly based on uh, what Professor Campbell said and uh, what the doctor said uh, this morning. As to um, this issue of uh, the Yang Sari defence, speaking to the doctor and the doctor laughing, um, it's really unclear what, uh, what, what, that, what that amounts to. Um, I assume uh, that your honours have uh, um, uh, received enough information on the doctor to, uh, to be able to conclude that he would be able to follow the proceedings from the holding cell today. Um, and certainly that's, that's a, a prerequisite or a fundamental in, in Rule 81.5, that the accused be able to follow the proceedings, um, whether it's in the courtroom or in the holding cell. So um, all we would ask, the prosecution would ask, is that your honours satisfy your minds that um, the doctor today has provided enough information for you to conclude that he's able to follow the proceedings today, um, and then obviously um, uh, the, the, trial, uh, the trial should continue today. Um, and as long as your honours have received that information, um, we would submit 
based on um, the evidence that you received uh, so far from the doctors, that uh, that would be enough. Um, to continue today's hearing. You know, the prosecution has always said that uh, uh, Mr. Yang Sari's health is, is, is fragile, and the doctors have said that as well. But it must be looked at on a day-by-day -day -day basis. Um, and certainly, um, as long as your honours are, are happy, are confident, you have enough information that he can follow the proceedings for the day from the holding cell. It is in the interest of justice that, uh, uh, whether Yang Sari gives away or not, that uh, the proceedings, um, proceedings continue, because his presence in the holding cell is in fact a virtual presence um, before the court, because he has access to his lawyers, he has access to the hearing, he's got to fact, uh, counsel defending him. That's the international standard, and that's the standard under uh, Rule 81.5. Uh, so as long as your honours uh, can assure yourself that the doctor uh, has given enough information to say he can follow from the holding cell today, we will submit that, um, that the hearing continue today. Thank you. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci bonjour, bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, 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 Mesdames et Messieurs les juges, et bonjour à tous. Simplement de très courtes observations en complément de ce que Monsieur le Procureur a dit. Et ma première observation sera à propos de ce revirement de position de Monsieur Yangsari hier, puisque soudainement Monsieur Yangsari a décidé de ne plus renoncer à son droit d'être présent. Les parties civiles interrogées sont les mêmes, les témoins sont les mêmes, et tout d'un coup, M. Yang Sari décide qu'il souhaite absolument être présent, alors que jusqu'à maintenant, il avait renoncé à ce droit. Je crois qu'on pourrait en premier lieu s'interroger sur les raisons de ce revirement de position dans un procès tel que celui-ci. Ma deuxième observation est pour dire comme l'ont dit d'ailleurs messieurs les procureurs, mais je souhaitais que la partie civile exprime aussi que la Chambre a pris une décision le 26 novembre dernier en tenant compte précisément de l'équilibre des droits de toutes les parties et en prenant compte également des droits de M. Yang Sari. La Chambre a prévu des aménagements spéciaux et je crois que cette décision est tout à fait conforme à la jurisprudence internationale en la matière. Je crois qu'il est normal que la Chambre ait pris cette décision après avoir écrit et les experts qui sont venus nous expliquer la situation. Je crois qu'il est très clair, en effet, que M. Yang Sari est apte. Il n'a jamais été dit qu'il était à moitié inconscient, comme le dit aujourd'hui sa défense. Donc je pense que nous pouvons parfaitement rester en l'état de la décision qu'a pris la Chambre. Nous avons entendu l'avis du médecin, il n'est pas nécessaire de le réentendre dans le, dans le prétoire. La Chambre a pris cet avis en a tenu compte. Je pense que nous pouvons donc poursuivre les débats en l'état actuel. C'est l'intérêt des parties civiles aussi que ce débat soit poursuivi comme ils doivent l'être jusqu'à leur terme. Merci. Thank you, Mr. President. Just let me put a couple other points that were made. Uh, first of all, Mr. Smith mistakes and misleads the trial chamber when they claim what our position is. We have never stated that Mr. Ng Sri is mentally ill in a sense that he has dementia. What we have claimed is that because of his physical illnesses, he's unable to follow the proceedings. That has been our position, it has been consistent, and we don't know why the prosecution continuously tries to mislead the trial chamber into believing otherwise. They say it's a day-to-day situation. I agree. In fact, we would say it's an hour-to-hour -hour or moment-to-moment -moment situation. When Dr. Campbell was here, that was weeks ago. Part of the reports that he relied on by the other doctors was months ago. What is he today? How is Ms. Inksri feeling today? 
when I asked the doctor and he laughs, that was enough for me, but we can hear from the doctor. That's what's most important. Because the fundamental issue here is, how do we monitor? And how do his lawyers monitor? Because the lawyers are there to protect the client's interests. I don't rely on the trial chamber. I'm sorry. As a defense lawyer, I've always maintained that it is counsel's duty and responsibility to protect their clients' rights. So how do we monitor from moment to moment, hour to hour, day to day, whether our client is capable and indeed able to follow the proceedings? It is not sufficient to say he's downstairs, he's in the presence of the building, he, we have a television monitor there, and therefore uh, he's able, he is present and he's following the proceedings. That is insufficient. It's like me on my couch asleep with a television on. I'm not watching what's on the television. Am I present in the living room? Yes. But that's what we're talking about. Now, we have maintained that because of his physical illnesses, he is unable to follow the proceedings. And we met with him. We're the only one in this room, by the way, who's actually met with Mr. Inkshire, who actually have seen him and talked to him to see what his condition is. Whether Mr. Inkshire takes a U-turn or not, it matters not. The Constitution doesn't say, well, you only have one, one time and one time only to exercise your rights. Is a continuing right. And if the trial chamber is going to insist that our client 24-7 is capable of assisting his defense, then we are insisting, and the client is insisting, that we uh, monitor the situation in a way that you can actually see it. If he's in the courtroom, and if he's asleep, then you can see that he's able to follow the proceedings. So then I can make my application that based on 81.5, he is not physically or mentally able to participate. That's what this is all about. And what the prosecution would like is to just have him in the building. It doesn't matter whether he's able to participate. But let's try to finish this case, get the conviction, and be done with. That's what this is all about. Now, we either give him his rights or don't give him his rights. We can't have it both ways. So if you don't want him physically present, then you have capabilities so that there's a video cam on him at all times so we can see him, the public can see him. The alternative is for us to be down there and to be videotaping him so we have a record. Otherwise, we're being accused by the prosecution of giving evidence. But th that's what has to happen. Otherwise, it is a trial in absentia. That's what it amounts to. It is a trial in absentia. Being physically present isn't enough. And so we would ask at this point that the doctor come, because contrary to what the prosecution claims today, and again, another misleading uh, and uh, mischaracterization of the doctor's pithy report, the doctor never made an assessment as to whether the client is capable of following the proceedings throughout the day. He merely states that it is more comfortable for him to be down there. Comfort is one thing. Capability of following the proceedings is something else. And so the doctor may, never made that assessment, and we don't even know whether the doctor is capable of making that assessment. We don't know whether he has the, the expertise, but he certainly can give us a medical opinion as to his state of affairs and whether he is, in fact, able to follow the proceedings throughout the day uh, with the breaks that we have. Thank you.
chiều một tối anh ra thăm đo lại tất cả chuyện từ cầm máy bay cáp đi lục nôn chi đại ban lược đại miền bầm non trong lược lăng quanh hà với thùng anh chơi Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I just like to say what I tried to say. ប្រសិនបើលោកមេត្តាពីមានបំណងលើកឡើងពាក់ព័ន្ធនៅមេដឹងបញ្ហាសុខភាពរបស់លោកអ៊ីងទរីនៅកាយចូលរួមសមណា